Hi and welcome to the Shadow Studio 2 Quick Start Guide. This video will get you up and running. Uh, if you're interested in a more advanced tutorial, you can check out that one as well as we have another video on the presets that come with the plugin. So this is what your download should look like. And essentially we've got a readme, the plugin and the presets. The readme will just tell you the directories for the installation on Windows and Mac and just tell you a bit about the licensing as well as a link if you guys having any issues Installation is pretty easy. I'm going to grab the Windows plugin and chuck it into my version of After Effects plugins. You can chuck it in here or add it to a folder, it doesn't really matter. And then the user presets go in here. Copy and paste those. Now let's start up After Effects and let's apply Shadow Studio 2. These are the default settings and we'll see this great big watermark X here. That's because I'm currently running it unlicensed. So we can come to the licensing here and enter a license key. Then we should get a message that it was either successful or unsuccessful and it will go away. And let's go through the parameters. So normal is just your normal drop shadow essentially, but way more beautiful. We are using an angle to control the direction. Inner shadow is exactly the same, um, although currently it just looks completely black. So maybe if we just lower the opacity, we can see that there. And essentially it is the same shadow, but uh, the compositing options are instead of placing the foreground in front, the shadow gets composited inside the foreground and on top of it. The radial shadow is similar to the normal shadow. However, instead of using an angle to control the direction, we're using an origin. So the origin you can drag wherever you want and the distance of the origin to the layer itself will have an effect on the distance of the shadow but you can also tweak that here as well so you have you've got two different ways to control distance with the radial shadow as well as you can see that um you know on this side the shadow is pointing down and on this side it's pointing right this is to simulate more of a point light source whereas the normal shadow mode is to simulate a directional light source so distance here is the distance that the shadow has. If it's really low, it kind of just looks like this boring blur. If, and also the opposite end, you can make it look really far. Softness does what it says on the tin. Um, that's zero, there's no softness at all. So you can see all the different samples here. And if you make it really soft, it creates this very diffuse look. We have the color of the shadow. So that's pretty simple. If you're looking at the inner shadow, we also have a blend mode. So you can actually choose which blend mode that the color is then composited with over the foreground, which is kind of handy. Because if you're using, uh, if you're doing drop shadows, you might be aware that often combining soft light with the normal compositing mode actually yields better looking results. So that's a handy thing inside the inner shadow. Whereas a normal drop shadow has just one opacity slider, Shadow Studio uses two opacity sliders and this allows it to create many more varied styles of shadow effects. So this might seem a bit counterintuitive. However, this is key to creating different stylistic results. So I encourage you if you're interested in why we have two sliders, maybe check out the um, advanced tutorial. I've set them both to 100 and I'm just gonna turn the softness off just to help um, demonstrate something. So if we turn the opacity start to zero, you can see that they the first iterations of the shadow are zero opacity and they interpolate to 100% and vice versa. We also have easing here. So you'll notice that at the start, the shadows are sort of um, much closer together and they further along they get, the more distance between them. So that's to do with the ease in. We have another mode ease in and out, which you can kind of see that there, but generally you'll want to ease in. And this is a global easing value here. At zero, everything is completely linear. And at 100%, it's a, basically an exponential ease from the start to the end. We also have an advanced tab here, and these are multipliers of this here. So for example, if the distance multiplier was zero, even though we have an ease in of 100%, because we're multiplying that by zero, then we get zero ease and essentially we have a linear fall off here. But again, this is more advanced. So generally you can get some pretty good looks just by playing with this slider here. Quality, um, we have number of samples. So currently 36 and you might need more than that. If you crank this distance parameter heaps, you might start to see, oh, there's not enough uh, samples to fill that in. So you might wanna increase that. This can go really high, uh, 256 at the moment. That will increase the render time, but not by too much. 32 should be enough for most things. Also, we have this uh, resolution here, and this is easier to explain if the softness is zero. You can kind of see here, because we have no softness, that um, the resolution isn't super high on these samples here. 
we could bump that up to extreme where there is no loss of resolution. However, in most cases, you can totally get away with moderate because you'll have a certain amount of softness. The softer your shadows are, essentially the more you can get away with a lower resolution. If we were looking pretty close by here and we were to set this to extreme, there's pretty much no difference at all. It's only when you pretty much have no softness that you'll see, ah, oh, yeah, I can see what the um, resolution thing is doing here. But moderate is good. For most cases, you won't notice any visual loss in quality and the rendering will be much faster. Under compositing, we have source opacity and that's just the original layer being composited back on top. So zero being shadow only. And then we have this offset shadow. So the reason we have this is because if it's at zero and we start drawing these shadows, um, they kind of have this ugly fringe because they're at the exact same spot as the source layer. So this offset shadow is a distance and then it also depends on the angle of the shadow. So if the angle was over here, well now the shadows are being offset to the bottom left two pixels and that will help you remove any fringing that you might get. So that is the basics of Shadow Studio. I hope you enjoy using this product as much as we enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun, create some really cool stylistic results. Check out the advanced tutorial if you're getting to the nitty gritty, as well as some of the presets if you want to get some certain looks really quick. And also check out our other products on PluginEverything.com. We've got a lot of free stuff. Um, we're adding more stuff all the time, as well as some other paid ones as well.